Hello everybody, my name is Rolak and welcome back to Darksiders. In the last episode we met up with Ulfame once more to get ourselves a new weapon. Uh, along the way of returning to Samael, we collected quite a bit of few new things, including a couple of lifestone shards, some raft shards, and even a new enhancement for our weapon. We also gave Samael the Heart of the Chosen from uh, the Griever, and we also gained Chronomancer. War can now activate chronospheres and tempor temporarily slow down time. So yes, with that in hand, and with the Tremor Gauntlet also in hand, we now have a completely new area that we can explore. And in this episode, we're going to be doing just that. No dilly-dallying or any kind of the sort. Let's actually see how good this enhancement is. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. That guy's running away because of it. Alright, so the next area is a bit weird. There's not really a um there's not really much of a dungeon. It's more or less just a large area. I guess you can call the next area a dungeon if in some sense, but it's very different from all the other locations we've been through so far. So it is going to be quite a weird area, but it's yeah, it's going to be a bit different from the other areas. For reference sake, we're not beginning we're not going to be getting a uh, like a map or a treasure treasure seeker or whatever it's called. Apologies for my sniffling. I don't know what's going on with me today. Got quite a bit of phlegm in the throat. It's a bit of annoying. Just show off this. Very nice. Now with that move from the Trevor Gauntlet, if you do it in say like a corner, you can rack up some pretty high combos. But it currently stands not a whole lot to do right now. Okay. Oh, right, using chronospheres. Uh we'll get to that in just a bit since we are not actually right in front of one. All right. So, chronospheres. Chronospheres are a bit strange. Uh, the way it works is that you can either interact it with uh, the B button, or you can activate it with the crossplate. I don't know how you can activate it with the crossplate, and you just can. Now, I believe what we have to do is activate it. Then we gotta twist this. Or it can just completely turn off and we'll have to do it again. Because that, seem, that seems fair. Alright, so chronospheres do not last forever. They have a limited set amount of time. So you got to do what you need to do. Fit in the set amount of time. Rush over to where you, need, where you need to be. And it'll all be good. Oh boy. Ooh. All right, another switch right there, just so we can get back. As well as another, hey, a flesh burster. We haven't seen these guys in a while. Oh, didn't mean to do that move. Oh, is he dead already? Ah, all right. Guess we are getting pretty stronger now. I mean, our sword is that on level three, isn't it? No, it's still on level two. But still, we're doing pretty good damage. It's probably Hellfire. Apparently this thing's pretty good. I didn't really use this enhancement all that much. I'm still trying to figure out what the other enhancement is other from the two that you buy. Because aside from uh, Havoc, I think it's called, and Weapon Master, I don't really know what the other ones are. Okay, so let's really have to lean back, jump. Ooh, sweet. All right, got a new uh, artifact. That's very nice. Kind of forgot that was there, but hey, let's keep going. Oh god damn it! I completely forgot to set my time. That's gonna be an issue. Hang on one moment. All right, and we are good. Let's move along over to this area and enter the dry road. Brand new areas for us to explore. 
as well as some semi-new Duskwings. These guys are a tad different, as in they shoot projectiles, but they're still an instant kill and should be real no harm. Some more Wicked along the way. Punch. Punch. Punch, 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 punch. Yeah, these guys also kind of get kind of annoying for a while. Crow, get over here. There we go. I don't think I've ever actually mentioned this, but uh, killing crows, uh, just the birds that fly about randomly, uh, they do give you quite a bit of health, especially on like the early game. So if you see one and you're kind of low on health, go ahead and take one. Ooh, all right. So these guys are, well, we're just over here, okay. These are angels. However, they're not the same angels as we fought before. These, I believe, are called the Forsaken Angels. They are demonic-like angels that serve the destroyer. Or they serve themselves. It's not fully clear on who they serve. They're practically the same as the normal angels, and they're also quite easy to take out themselves. I believe there are more on the way. Yep. They also have a bit of a distorted voice along with that, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're very easy to take care of. No real issue. Now, if it was the Sword and Shield guys, then we might have a bit of an issue, but we don't really have. They're pretty easy to take out. Now then, if memory serves correctly, there is an item of sword that is over on this ledge somewhere. It's not over there because we did come from there. Is it? There it is. Got ourselves another lifestone shard. That's always good. There's another artifact over there. That's also pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab you. There's also another soldier. How are we doing for the artifacts, actually? Are we making good progress? Oh, we got ten of the soldiers and two of the champions. Alright. It may seem like it's not much, but we will be getting quite a bit later down the road. Especially when I probably... Most likely... Eventually... When I eventually look up a guide to tell where they all are. Because nobody is perfect in remembering all this kind of stuff. So there's a bunch of souls. Now, I don't remember if I can actually glide down there, considering by the demon growth, I assume I can. I'm going to go try it. All right, yeah, this is the only way you can get to the Volcom location. Let's go and talk to him. Come on, pop up. There you are. All right, what do you have? Let's trade in those for a thousand. Um... God, there is so much to buy. Hmm. Do I want to buy anything? To be honest, I think I'm going to try to save up for Wrath Core. Because I would like another Wrath Core, considering that. Yeah, we have five, but we can always use more. It's always a good idea to have an extra amount of Wrath Cores. It's never a bad idea not to. Alright, and with that, we've pretty much done everything in the area that we can do for now. I know later, much later in the game, when we come back here, there's going to be a certain enemy that is for some reason here. I think it's only in the Warmaster edition, but he's there for some reason. And we will be dealing with him later. Alright, good down you. Oh, I never shut off Mercy. Yeah, Mercy does quite a bit of damage if you just stunlock one, I guess. But Mercy isn't all that fast in shooting. Even if you just try to tap it, she shoots at the she. It shoots at the same amount of speed as it would if you hold it down. So it's not the most. It's not the fa fastest. Oh boy, yeah, death claw over there, or grapple claw over there. It's not the fastest weapon. Oh boy. It's not the fastest weapon, but it is effective at taking down certain enemies at uh, length. Yeah, boy. Yeah, man. All right, let's go for a ride. Yeah, man, buddy. There we go. Drip off that horn. All right, let's get down to business. 
Now, uh, from a previous encounter off camera, uh, I do believe that you cannot out that you can't block or counter uh, grapple claws attacks. Why exactly? I am. What the fuck was that noise? Was that part of the game? Holy fuck, that actually scared the shit out of me. What the fuck was that? Okay, that's highly concerning, but I'll check it out later. Is that one of my dogs? Jesus Christ, I've never heard that noise before. Alright, well, we'll just take that with whatever that is. That actually took me by complete surprise. It might have been a demon within the game, but I highly doubt it. That was a really guttural sound. Anyway, uh, also if these guys we can just shoot them and really, they'll really say anything they got. Which is also a little mechanic that we're going to be doing them for when they get back they grab the thing again we ride it up jump over glide up glide up and we simply toss a bomb over there and bada bing bada boom there we have it okay now ooh, ooh ooh almost forgot about that almost missed that all right buddy coming out all right Another chest on the other side that looks like a big old chest. Might be another abyssal armor piece. I don't actually remember what all the collectibles are past this point, to be perfectly honest. What do we got? Carnage! That's the enhancement! Okay, that's it. War fills with hatred and generates chaos and increased rate. There we go. Alright, those are all the overworld uh, normal enhancements that we have. What does this look like, actually? Ooh, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks really nice. Alright, so yes, Carnage. Uh, boost chaos gain by the Chaos Eater Sword. And it allows chaos generation by all weapons. So that's very helpful. But do I want that right now? Actually, you know what? That could be actually pretty helpful in this difficulty. So I'm going to leave that on for quite a while. I probably could have... not. it was too high up. Plus it looks really nice. So I think... I think actually for now I'm going to save up for the other two enhancements. In Volgrim, I'll get the chaos. Is it? Here's the thing. I'm gonna buy all the. I am gonna buy all the upgrades. I'm just not gonna show them on screen how I'm gonna get all the upgrades because there is some way that you can get a bunch of upgrades. However, it is very slow and very tedious. However, it's probably the best way to get a bunch of souls. So, yeah, I'll bring it up when it, when we get to it. All right, now this part. This part is a bit tricky. Oh, what is that over there? Ooh, that might actually be another collectible. It will shoot you just to get you out of the way. I'll just walk over here. Jump up here, and there we go. Just another soul chest, no big deal. Always nice to have a bit more souls. All right, now, oh boy. Okay, so we want to target these guys in that order. More bears to do so with the crossblade because there's no delay with walking with the the uh, mercy. That's what it's called. Mercy is an effective weapon, but she's really not the best for like puzzle solving. She is for just quick solutions, if anything. But uh, for the crossblade, it's better to do things in rapid and convenient succession. All right, just behind this little entry, or exit over here is another crystal cluster, so we'll go ahead and bust that open. And we got ourselves another lifestone shard. Very nice. Halfway down, and we got another full restore, and that's very good. I should really be counting down how many uh, lifestone shards we are actually getting, because that could be really helpful for both me and the viewers. But I do not have the editing prowess, nor the full access to Photoshop. So, we're going to have to go with what we got. I could make some makeup and paint, but that would be just completely stupid. Alright, buddy, what do you got? Unlock this vocation. Vocation. Uh, yeah, just Bane and Weapon Master to do for the uh, 
enhancements. I'm actually going to save up for those, so that's going to be 7,500. Jeez. All right, and we have reached the Ashlands. Homeland of the Stygian, and as well as the Ashworms. Now, you might be wondering, why can't we just walk out on the sand? What's going to happen? Well, that's going to happen. <laughs> so, yes, we cannot walk out. Have you ever seen, I think it's Tremors? I think it is. It's pretty much like that. So, we got to use the crossblade to activate that. The sand does slow us down quite a bit. So, make your pace. Otherwise, you're going to be ye. Quite the snack for an ash worm. Indeed. It's also just really interesting. I love the idea of giant enemies that just wander about and that you can't really interact with at the moment, but you can just see them in the distance. I really like that. It gives a sense of mystery as well as intimidation and Probably fear in some cases. It's a really nice concept that I like, and I wish that a lot. I wish that a lot of games would do it more, because it's it's a really nice bit that like they put it into games when they do that. We got some more Forsaken Angels to take care of. Yeah, these guys are really not that big of an issue. Pretty weak, flimsy. Their body parts clip through the ground. It is very satisfying to hit them, though. I think the clanking of their armor getting hit is really, really satisfying. May just be me, though, so. Also, another part that I like about the Ashworms is just the noise they make. Like a sound wave type noise. It's not natural, but that is how they would travel around using sound and echolocation and whatnot. Alright, got more of these guys. Another type of swarm. We can just shoot them. However, that is really slow, so I'm just gonna do this. Oh, Jesus! Alright, I didn't actually expect that to work. Jeez. I, this place can this base This place is a bit annoying. It's a bit tedious. This... By the way, the Ashlands is our next dungeon. This is our next big dungeon. However, it's not really much of a dungeon. More or less just a uh, big old place. Just a big old giant location. Which we are going to be getting into, into more detail in the next episode. So yes, we got quite a ways, ways, into, it. Got quite a ways into it. Got a couple of items, as well as the last uh, overworld normal enhancement. What do you mean by that? Normal, we'll get into later. So in the next episode, we're going to be traversing the Ashlands, avoiding the Ash Worms, and hopefully getting closer to the Stygian. See you guys then.